Can X Defiant dethrone Call of Duty? That is a question I don't think I ever thought I would be asking about this title. If you remember when it first debuted, many people sort of laughed at it, dismissed it, and then it kind of went away, went through a bit of a rebranding. I think the logo and sort of the identity of the game does look quite a bit better. And then gameplay recently came out and looked a lot better. Initial response way back when some people got to play it early was that it wasn't very good. Maybe there was some potential, but now we've got streamers saying it's amazing, it's got great viewership, and many people are saying, oh, this thing could take over. I do have an article we're going to look at in a second from X-Fire that's asking the question, can X-Defiant dethrone Call of Duty? But before we do that, I want to ask a couple of questions. Number one is, can anybody really compete with Call of Duty. This is a part of the Activision Blizzard discussion. You know, you've got Sony saying nobody can really make a rival to it. It's got 11 studios that work on it. It's a commercial Leviathan. Even the people who play Call of Duty tend to spend more money. Microsoft saying, hey, you know, 10 years is more than enough time to make a rival to Call of Duty. And it's bigger than just one game type and one game mode. You've got Call of Duty Mobile. You have Warzone. You have all of the various things they're trying to do with the DMZ. Z, and then you have the more stripped down arena style of gameplay that sort of come and gone and it's trying to make a bit of a comeback which is another question that I have can arena shooters truly come back I, I kind of thought with Splitgate and Halo Infinite we were having a bit of a resurgence of the arena shooter and then we were looking at games that tried it and maybe they didn't do quite the right things there was Lawbreakers there was some game I think that was even called Rocket League which was a bit of a rip off from the original mod in Quake 3 Arena called Rocket Arena uh, I, I think they actually might have called it Rocket Arena I think Rocket League is obviously the game with the cars and the balls ignore that but you get what I'm saying is that there was these games that were trying to do the arena shooter thing. They were trying to bring back Unreal Tournament or the Quake Days, this sort of stripped down, fast paced shooter thing. And they never really got anywhere. And I know that even Lawbreakers is teasing like having a comeback, which seems crazy to me. And another question I have with X Defiant is, are we just sort of in the honeymoon phase? I feel like this has happened before. The fresh new car smell convinces everybody that this is the game or this is really awesome and fun. And then the veneer fades and all the chips and the paint start to happen and the frustration hits. I do know that this is a game that has really promoted no skill-based matchmaking in their sort of connection-based lobby. But if you really want to play ranked there is ranked and I think that's going to be appealing to a lot of people who felt the skill based matchmaking was giving them whiplash and kind of breaking their neck in Call of Duty I was one of those people I'd really fallen away from Call of Duty for a very long time came back to Modern Warfare 2 and was really enjoying it and then I felt like if I played moderately well like a 1KD I was suddenly getting thrown into lobbies that were very unenjoyable and this game is essentially saying look no skill based matchmaking if you want ranked go in to ranked and the rise in streaming has me asking another question what about the BR curse what about the battle royale curse these really big streamers like Dr. Disrespect and Timmy Tenders and the guys that really try to run you know the big directories on purple they basically gravitate towards battle royale and they always sort of burn out on arena because arena is a bit of a meat grinder you're just sort of in the trenches shoot 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 go 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 dead and then you kind of do it over and over again and it can lead to some intense moments when you have those crazy comebacks or a real quick montage or a really great snipe but there's There's no narrative. There's no long, drawn-out story. There's not those highs and those lows that you get with the Battle Royale. I think sort of the explosion of Battle Royales was helped with the spectator aspect of streaming because you could tune in, you immediately know what's going on, you see how many people are left, you see where they are in the map, you see how many kills that they have, and you're already oriented to the action. It's a little bit different with an arena shooter because it always kind of looks the same. You drop into somebody's game and you're watching and it's like, okay, I see the score and I see they're kind of in a position or they're running around, but that's what every other stream kind of looks like. Even the best players, it all kind of blends together and that's no shade to the players. They do an amazing job, 
but the day-to-day spectation will likely fade. And I don't think that that's the fault of the arena shooter. I think it's that battle royale curse. The viewers have been conditioned to want something else. Which really makes me ask the final question before we take a look at this article. Is there a need for esports? Can something like this truly make it and survive without an esports hook? Can it purely survive off of sort of the excitement from some streamers streaming it and kind of promoting it? And I do know it's got some of that Ubisoft appeal, right? They're taking some of the characters and some of the abilities from other, you know, known worlds like Splinter Cell and stuff. And is that going to be enough to bring people in? I really can't tell you. All I know is when I first watched the gameplay trailer, it went over on my larger channel called The Rundown. That's more of an upload channel. This channel is more of a mixture of live streams and uploads like this. And I was like kind of surprised. I was like, how does this look good? Everybody was kind of dogging this when it first debuted. And then there were people that played the beta and they just didn't say that it felt very good. And now people are singing its praises. So let's just take a look at this article. See what they have to say. Written here by Daryl Lara. Can X Defiant dethrone Call of Duty? The first person shooter from Ubisoft recently launched a closed beta and players were impressed with the gameplay. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was a commercial success when it launched. However, players have been upset by how it has been rife with microtransactions, with Activision taking a step back from its 2019 predecessor. Even with all the negative sentiments, it cannot be denied that Call of Duty is still the leading title first person shooter genre but while this remains true a new shooter is threatening to usurp it keep in mind you also are seeing some criticism lobbied at call of duty for things they did in the dmz with microtransactions i didn't really want to do a video on that we haven't really enjoyed covering call of duty because of the crowd that it tends to draw they tend to only really care about cod and that's fine, but I don't really like covering COD for that reason, but I just want to make mention of that. We are aware that that is something going on with the DMZ, because I thought the DMZ showed a lot of promise. Kind of concerning to hear that, though. A new first-person shooter is coming, and players who have tried it out say it can dethrone Call of Duty. X Defiant is still very early in development at Ubisoft, but players are already calling it a promising competitor to Call of Duty. I'm always hesitant to say stuff like this because I think this is something gamers quickly do. They quickly do a comparison and then they quickly create sort of like a a false binary or a false dichotomy as to where like, oh, this game's going to take over and that game's going to die. I definitely think you could see this game sort of siphon players off, especially in the viewership streaming world if people get tired of Call of Duty, especially skill-based matchmaking. If you're a streamer and there's no skill-based matchmaking and you can be farming montages all day while you're streaming, that's a great use of your time. Streamers really like to have a lot of purpose and layers of purpose to their streaming and their content creation so that they're not having to like sort of maybe farm a montage off stream. A lot of these guys, I know they do this. They create secondary accounts or they'll smurf or they'll they'll VPN and they'll do all these things just to get in places where they can throw up really good games and really good numbers because that's the expectation. That is the pressure that is put on them. And a game comes along and lets them do that and it has the acceptance and the excitement and the hype of the audience, it could actually do something that seems impossible. And I, when I watched it, I felt like I was watching a mixture of like Rainbow Six Siege with some of the corner management, but then it really reminded me of Call of Duty with how quick it was. But then it obviously had elements of like Overwatch with like abilities and stuff. There's a lot here that I think could, you know, end up being really appealing to a lot of different types of players. Players have been impressed with the results of the X Defiant closed beta, so far with features that Call of Duty players have been asking for in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. One player who got into the closed beta said that the game is addicting and fun. According to Twitter user GT Batto, the game can put some pressure on the FPS market, and he hopes that gamers support the title after launch. And you know, Charlie Intel here, they're asking, what do y'all think? And this is the guy that weighed in, addicting and fun. I hope people actually support this game enough that it can actually put some pressure into the FPS market and not be another fad because we've seen this time and time again. People play it and hype it up and then completely forget about it quickly. That's why I mentioned the honeymoon phase. We could just be seeing the honeymoon phase. We also could just be seeing the illusion of the new, right? We all get bored. We all get too familiar with a game and when something's new, it feels better just because it's new. Then reality will settle in. I do think a lot of people are seeing promise and that does say something. 
what can players expect from X Defiant? X Defiant is a team-based 6v6 first-person shooter and boasts several game modes with varying objectives. It will have a familiar feel to multiplayer modes of Call of Duty. In X Defiant, players can choose from factions based on popular Ubisoft video games like The Division, Watch Dogs, Far Cry, Ghost Recon, and Splinter Cell. Each faction has abilities tied to the base games. Splinter Cell characters specialize in stealth, while the cleaners... I think that's supposed to be cleaners. Cleathers? Yeah, cleaners from the division use flamethrowers. The Watchdog faction uh, focuses on hacking devices and Far Cry Excel at support and healing. Ghost Recon characters use massive shields and are excellent for holding objectives. I wanted to make a joke there about like Ghost Recon. is <laughs> game. <laughs> their faction's not existing because they haven't been around in such a long time, but I didn't want to say that because I actually kind of miss Ghost Recon. Anyway, most of the maps are based on popular locations from the said video games with 14 arenas available at at launch I think this is going to be the real test right here okay because I do think most game companies that are kind of dividing you know designing like a 6v6 environment they can make balanced abilities and guns they'll have to tweak certain things right the hive mind of the player base always finds some kind of an exploit they always find some kind of way to make things like broken but it's going to come down to those arenas, man. If you're going to make an arena shooter, you have got to nail map design or people will walk away because that's where you get that game flow. That's where you get those good flanking positions. That's where you get that good action. And if you don't get that, people will walk away very quickly. The game also has a battlefield layout similar to the three-lane Call of Duty map design. X Defiant features familiar variants of Call of Duty game modes like Team Deathmatch, Domination, Kill Confirmed, and Hardpoint. What players are most excited about is the movement in X Defiant. Gameplay is much faster and more fluid than in Modern Warfare 2, and players have already figured out how to do the slide canceling during the beta test. See, that's the question. Will they embrace stuff like that and say, yeah, that's fine if you want to do that, or will they try to put a stop to it? Because that's the kind of thing that I don't actually know if there's a right or a wrong answer. If you just let people do it, it can become part of the game it can kind of become part of the ecosystem of the hive mind of what the players do and yet it can also grate against design and how you want certain choke points to be a certain length away and when you can get there faster by doing certain things it can throw off the entire artistry and the balance that goes into map design so we'll see how they decide to respond to that According to early reviews, X Defiant will both have casual and ranked game modes with no skill-based matchmaking in its casual lobbies. This, I'm telling you, this is going to be a huge factor for lots of people. It drove people like myself. I consider myself to be a very average, very mediocre player, and it drove me away from Call of Duty. The uh, the skill-based matchmaking whiplash was just too extreme. I don't care about the game that much. I, I don't care to sweat and get good and get better. I'm just trying to have fun, right? And me having fun for one or two games and feeling like I get punished, that was a quick route for me to literally just stop playing the game because I just don't care. It's not my main game. It's it's not something that I'm passionate about. It's just something that I was playing for fun. As soon as the fun leaves, I'm out. However, gamers can expect to play against other players of similar skill in ranked mode. I actually loved doing that back in the day when I played a lot of Valorant because I was kind of looking into the game and trying to learn that style of game, trying to think about, like, shoutcasting that kind of game, and, you know, I needed to have knowledge of it, and I actually loved Ranked, because it always felt well done. It didn't feel like uh, my neck was getting broken by, like, oh my gosh, this is so much harder than the previous game. They felt intense, they felt close, and we were okay with that, because we knew that's what we were signing up for. We weren't signing up for, like, a casual throwaway game where we, you know, stomp a little bit, or maybe we go up against somebody who's way better than us, because it's totally random, like, you don't know what you're gonna get. We, we actually really enjoyed the ranked in uh, in Valorant when we played it. X Define is also letting players use and customize 24 weapons with 44 attachments. Gamers can use five explosive devices. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait a while before we get a chance to see X Define as a full game. While the early reactions are promising, several others have tried the tango with Call of Duty in the past. They certainly have and it doesn't typically go all that well with that said we're hoping that ubisoft will continue on its path toward making x define a worthy challenger of call of duty if nothing else more competition is always better who knows the success of x defiant might encourage activision blizzard to try and reinvent its formulaic approach to call of duty (laughs) 
That's wishful thinking. I don't think they're going to do anything in COD, uh, especially not the skill-based matchmaking. Gamers who are interested in joining the closed beta can sign up here. The closed beta will run until April 23rd. So there you have it. I, you know, my five questions again, can it compete with COD? Is that even possible? Can arena shooters have a comeback? You know, is this just the honeymoon phase? Is it going to experience that battle royale curse within the viewership streaming world? And does it need to think about esports if it wants to survive? Because I do think the spectator and the viewership aspect will certainly play a part in a game like this being successful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out my live streams, hit subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you in the next video.